Hello and welcome back to Behind the Fade, it's the channel where we talk all aspects of life science mixing and life science in general. And today I want to talk about something uh, I feel I have to talk about at some point. Uh, I have a feeling that every channel that deals with audio in one way or the other has at some point to make a video about gain staging and how immensely important it is. So this is my approach to gain staging. Don't worry about it too much. And now I can hear you all going, what? Everybody else tells me it can make or break a mix. And you tell me not to worry about it too much? Well, yeah, let me make my point. Don't leave me just yet. Hear me out. Of course, there's this one golden rule. And that's not even golden. That's platinum. That's, I don't know, uh, a must. And that's, of course, when you level your channel, stay away from that zero dB full scale. Because after that comes digital distortion, and that's really, really ugly. In fact, I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, you have a desk in front of you, and you have a pair of headphones, and some source, let's say a microphone, and you've got some minutes, plug in the microphone, put on the headphones on low volume, and crank the gain until you exceed zero to be full scale, and listen to how that sounds. And I guarantee you, once you heard how that sounds, you will never need another reminder to stay away from that line by a good distance. But other than that, I don't know. I mean, what we always get told is this procedure. Of course, I, I'm aware this is made for beginners, but still. Fade all the way down, and some even tell you to mute the channel for some extra safety, and then bring up the level to around minus 18 full scale, because that equals zero dB analog. Uh, if you get over that, it doesn't matter. It can't even be beneficial, because if you have good sounding preamps, then they add a little bit of harmonics to the sound, a little bit of texture when they go into light distortion. And then bring the fader up. However, there's one problem that you will run into. Uh, on some signals at least, you bring up the level to the desired minus 18 and then you bring up the fader by two inches and that's it. It's already too loud. And now the range for mixing are these two inches and faders are not linear, meaning down there a very little move carries a lot of weight. It changes the level quite drastically. So what we want is we want the faders around unity gain around zero um, and now I s at least heard one channel tell you that now you utilize subgroups so you have the right level and the faders around unity gain and you use subgroups to bring the level down oh, come on bring the gain down because they give us two reasons why the, the level should be around minus 18 one a desk works best and sounds best when it works with line level. That's what the desk is being built for. So the mic preamp has to bring up this signal to line level. Okay. And the second reason is uh, you're not using the full resolution of the converter if your gain is too low. That's the theory behind it. But what does that even mean in the real world? I mean, how much worse does a desk sound if it doesn't sound the best? How much worse does a converter sound if you're not using the full resolution? I mean, all converters these days have 24-bit, that's plenty. I mean, I, I don't know, I never checked it out, I never did an A-B comparison, it would be an interesting thing to do. But I would guess if you mix a solo grand piano in a stadium and you change the gain drastically, then you might hear something. And plus, I'm not saying that all your channels should have low gain. I mean, typical channels with very low, that end up with low gain settings because otherwise they're way too loud. It's things like the hi-hat, overheads, uh, and violins, for example. So it doesn't make or break your mix if your hi-hat and your overheads do not sound the best because they're not on line level and then don't use the full resolution of the converters. Plus, these channels are usually watched by beginners 
and hobbyists because they teach very basic stuff. And by the way, I mean no disrespect to these channels. It's great what they do. They teach the very basic stuff uh, and some of them are pretty successful and rightfully so. So I mean no disrespect. I just disagree on this one topic. So back to what I just said. So everybody watching these channels is a beginner. You know, let me rephrase that. Everybody who has a takeaway from these videos, everybody who learns something from these videos, teaching the very basic stuff are beginners and hobbyists so. I don't think that people that do arena tours uh, can learn a lot from these videos. Now, where do beginners and hobbyists usually mix? They mix in very small environments. Again, beginners and hobbyists do not do arena tours. And what's the nature of very small environments? A lot of what you hear in the room comes from the stage itself. You have a drum kit and guitar amplifiers, you've got some monitoring. So a lot of what you hear, of course there's exceptions, like there's an exception to every rule, but usually a lot of what you hear in the room comes from the stage directly. So now we use the PA to get a little bit above that and amplify our lead vocals and glue everything together a little bit by the mix. So and now keeping this in mind, you still think that now the hi-hat and the overheads that are not using the full resolution <laughs> of the converters will make or break your mix. And to back up my point a little bit more, let me tell you a story. Um, about like one and a half, two years ago or so, I was booked for a little tour. And it was a very small tour, not by the size of the venues, but by the, by the budget. Uh, but it was uh, Simon and Garfunkel tribute band. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm a rock guy, basically, but I still love Simon and Garfunkel, so I agreed to do it. So why am I mentioning the small budget? Because if you do a tour on a very small budget, there's no rehearsal, there's no prepping, there's nothing. Meaning you load into the first show, Maybe if you're lucky a little bit earlier than usual and you have to set up and configure everything and make everything work on that day. Which means if you run into issues, which I did that day, you might end up with very, very little time for sound check. And I had even had to do monitors from front of house. And I didn't even have the time to walk on stage and ring out my monitors and everything. Um, so it was really quick. And if you do a quick sound check, uh, you, uh, if you get a little bit more experience, this fader and gain thing becomes like one move. You bring up the fade and twist again at the same time. And I do that. And then, of course, like I said, I had to do monitors from front of the house. So I had two sets of channels. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link to all my other videos. Uh, check out splitting channels. So I bring up the gain in front of house channels real quick and then uh, just somewhere in the ballpark and then I get the monitors out of the way. And now I start working on the front of house sound and it was then that I realized that all my gains were really low because I didn't even take a look at them when I was starting with sound check. But it sounded great. And we did the entire tour with these very low gain settings. And it was a very successful tour, and it got a lot of compliments for my sound, even though the gains were very low, so the desk didn't sound the best, and I didn't use the full resolution of converters. Another example would be, I did a lot of classical orchestras. In fact, uh, I worked for some really famous opera singers and stuff like that. And uh, if you would look at my gains for the orchestra, uh, you would be petrified in disbelief, because they're all very low. And it always sounded very, very good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten so many tours in this genre. So that comes to show you there's the theory behind it. But in the real world, it all comes down to don't worry about it too much. Stay away from zero to be full scale. That's the only thing. That's it for today. Bye-bye.